Hello and welcome to News Laundry Interviews. Today at News Laundry, we are thrilled to be joined by the Finance Minister of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Thyagarajan. Thank you for making the time and joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. How do you think Indian regulators have kind of managed regulation here? Do you think the accusation, and it's not a new accusation, whether they make it against the Modi government or whether it was made against Manmohan Singh's government, crony capitalism has hampered our growth and while we may celebrate that we have the second richest man in the world today, etc. To what extent has that critique been fair in the past? And in what, uh, to what extent is it fair today? Sometimes it just worries me that we have all these um, meaningless kind of statistics that seem to fill us with pride. How does it affect us if the second richest man is uh, Indian or not? How does it affect your life? How does it affect my life? How does it affect the life of you know, 99.99999% of the 1.4 billion or so people in India. For that matter, when somebody said, oh, we have become the fifth largest economy. So what does it matter she to me? I, I worry about the average person's quality of life, whether they get drinking water, whether they have mm -hmm. a roof over their head, whether they have proper clothes, whether they get access to education. So, you know, this kind of searching for a, a slogan or, a, or a, you know, a feel-good kind of stat is meaningless. When you were at Lehman and you had a pretty long <laughs> stint at Lehman during, between 2001 and 2008, and you said, you know, there was a certain commitment to capitalism, but now we're all socialists. Today in 2022, you know, 13 years after the Great Recession, actually more 15 years after the Great Recession, where do you place yourself on that economic ideological spectrum? Uh, I guess firmly in the socialist camp. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's not such a great dichotomy, in my opinion, between kind of thoughtful and empathetic capitalism and hard-nosed and focused socialism, right? It's, it's only when it gets fuzzy and kind of, um, what can I say, extreme in its interpretation that the gap starts to widen in the sense that why I had said about capitalism was that... In the context of uh, the much spoken about ravery culture or freebies to which you gave an extremely eloquent and uh, viral reply. How do you think Indian regulators have kind of managed regulation here? I think this whole notion of ravery culture was just hypocrisy at best or misguided, uh, you know, even worse than that. That's a debate not worth having. Why will that debate not be had? Is there, has politics become too hostile? I mean, one can't expect a you know, Ms. Raman to sit with uh, you uh, and other finance ministers. Why are you so certain? And I'm not no, saying no, I disagree no. with you. I know it's become hostile. No, that, no, no, uh, that, no. that listen, is not going In my view, in, in India, the single biggest differentiator between rich states and poor states is the extent to which women are educated, have rights, and therefore participate in the economy and in society. Mm -hmm. Right? Just, just look at one statistic. Look at the percentage of girls that are in school at the age of 18, let's say, across states, right? And compare that to any other human development indicator or social development indicator, or for that matter, per capita income. Mm -hmm. There are rare exceptions. All political parties are subject to this kind of, you know, meaningless, at the core, meaningless sloganeering or uh, conventional wisdom or cliches or, you know, just kind of, uh, I don't know, like catchy slogans that are either meaningless mm -hmm. or misleading, right? And, and it doesn't take long to find examples on all, sli on all sides, I'm saying. Right? Including your party? Uh, I saw a tweet of yours where, you know, uh, I think Mr. Nadda took a barb at that uneducated leaders are making decisions and you then took a barb at the education of the Prime Minister and others, that they don't even understand the problem, so what will they solve? First, let me say that I don't necessarily take barbs at anybody for offensive reasons, right? Only when I find a particular hypocrisy, then I point it out using examples. But otherwise, I don't have time. My, my day job is, is pretty challenging and demanding. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to get into, you know, verbal duels with the random people. So there's a crisis of news and advertising is being gobbled up by Googles and Facebooks and the Apples. With your understanding and accomplishments in the field of economics and you know, revenue structures, 
what future do you see for news if in fact the powers that be can control the news and through news subvert democracy because they skew the information and people are gullible or uneducated and or ill informed enough that they make those choices it is a guaranteed failed state at some point so i think the real threat of this captive media which it is especially the delhi media is completely captive mm-hmm. is much more do you think government should advertise on news channels and newspapers i think government should communicate more directly with the people right right i'm not, i'm not sure that putting front page ads about you know 100 days and putting pictures of leaders is the basis for what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm saying the communication between the government and people and voters has to be more has to be more more nuanced and bidirectional मुफ्त खोरो मुफ्त में इतना ही मिलेगा टू वॉच द फुल अनएडिटेड इंटरव्यू यू हैव टू सब्सक्राइब टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री एंड पे टू कीप न्यूज फ्री बिकॉज ऑन द पब्लिक पेज द पब्लिक इज सर्व वी डिपेंड ऑन यू एंड नॉट ऑन एडवर्टाइजर्स सो गो टू डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री डॉट कॉम स्लैश सब्सक्रिप्शन एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड गेट ऑल आर अनएडिटेड इंटरव्यूज आर स्पेशल वीडियो शोज कॉमिक्स एंड एवरीथिंग दैट्स बिहाइंड द पे वॉल रिमेंबर टू सब्सक्राइब टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री यू पे just about 10 rupees a day that's less than well no a cigarette and smoking is injurious to health so subscribe and watch the full interview